Hello and welcome to this Dr. Ross Maths video on Key Stage 5, Constructing Proofs Involving Trigonometric Functions. And in this video we're going to be covering how we can prove two expressions are equal on either side of an identity or an equation. And note that I'm assuming, by the way, that you've already seen my video on these two key trigonometric identities here, that tan of x is always equal to sine of x over cos of x, regardless of what x is, and similarly, that sine squared of x plus cos squared of x equals 1 for any value of x. And just as a reminder about notation, when we write sine squared of x, that means you have sine of x all squared. So that's just a notational convenience. Note also that we're not going to be covering trigonometric identities involving reciprocal trig functions such as cosec, cot and sec. Now I basically have just two tips for any questions involving proving trigonometric identities. And one is this, to replace tans with sines and coses using this identity here. And my second tip for these proof questions is to combine any algebraic fractions into one single fraction. And that about allows you to solve all of these questions here. So without further ado, let's prove this first one here. We've got that 1 minus tan theta sine theta cos theta is always equal to cos squared theta. Now there's three ways of doing this. You can either start with the left hand side and gradually manipulate it until you get the right hand side. Or you can start with the right hand side and gradually manipulate it until you get the left hand side. Or you could actually work on both sides at the same time and show that you get to the same expression. Now I'm just going to start with the left hand side in this case because it's the more complicated expression. So I'm going to say left hand side is equal to 1 minus tan theta sine theta cos theta. And as per tip 1 here, we want to replace any tans with sine and cos. So I'm going to do that. So that's equal to, or I should say identical to, 1 minus, well that's sine of theta over cos of theta, using this identity here, times by sine of theta, and we can just write these over 1 so we can combine this into a single fraction. So that's sine theta over 1, cos of theta over 1. Now notice that this cos theta here in the numerator and this cos theta in the denominator cancel and that just leaves 1 minus sine of theta all squared and remember we can write that as sine squared of theta. And now if we look at this second identity here we can see that sine squared of theta plus cos squared of theta is equal to 1 and therefore 1 minus sine squared of theta must be equal to cos squared of theta. So that gives us just cos squared of theta and we know that is equal to the right-hand side. So we are therefore done. And I like to put a little square to say our proof is completed. That's a kind of mathematical notation for saying QED, that the proof is completed. We don't actually write the letters QED. What about one? We've got tan of theta plus one over tan of theta is identical to one over sine theta cos theta. Now again, as per tip 1, we're going to replace any tans with sine and cos. So tan of theta is just sine theta over cos of theta, and this is the left-hand side. And 1 over tan of theta, well, that's 1 over sine over cos. When we do 1 over fraction, it flips it upside down. So this will be cos of theta over sine of theta. And then as per tip 2 here, we want to combine any algebraic fractions into 1. So we want to combine this into a single fraction. Now remember, the way to do that is to multiply the denominators. So cos theta times sine theta is cos theta sine theta, or let's write it as sine theta cos theta. And then we cross multiply the numerators. So that sine theta gets multiplied by that sine theta to give sine squared of theta, which means sine of theta all squared plus this times this, this diagonal here, because we're cross multiplying, so cos squared of theta. Ah, but we know that sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equal to one. So that just becomes one over sine theta cos theta, which is the right hand side, and therefore again, our proof is complete. I should probably write equals right hand side here. The next one, C, we've got cos to the power of 4 theta minus sine to the 4 theta all over cos squared theta. And let's just say left hand side equals that. And we gradually want to get to 1 minus tan squared theta. So let's see how far we can get with the left hand side. Notice here 
this complicated expression here is just a difference of two squares. It's something squared minus something squared. And we know how to factorise that, don't we? We know we can have two brackets, one with a plus in the middle, one with a minus in the middle. Now, what's the square root of cos to the 4 of theta? Well, it's cos squared theta. So we put that here. And what's the square root of sine to the 4 of theta? Well, it's sine squared theta. And this is all over cos squared theta. Now, the cos squared theta plus sine squared theta from these two identities here, we know that is equal to 1. So this is just 1 times cos squared theta minus sine squared theta all over cos squared theta. Now we could apply the difference of two squares again, but what I'm noticing here is if I was to split up this fraction, I'd have cos squared theta over cos squared theta, which is 1, all this looks promising, and then I'd also have sine squared theta over cos squared theta, which we need to prove is equal to tan squared theta. So let's do that. We'll split up this fraction. Cos squared theta over cos squared theta is 1, minus, and we have sine squared theta over cos squared theta. Now, the reason this is tan theta is as such, if I was to move this squared outside of this fraction here, I have sine theta over cos of theta. Now, this is, this is the same, because if I had this fraction squared, I'd square the numerator and square the denominator to have that. So these two expressions are the same. And we know that sine of theta over cos of theta is equal to tan of theta. So we end up with 1 minus tan squared of theta. But the thing is, you can go straight from here to here. If you have sine squared theta over cos squared theta in general, it will be tan squared of theta. And that completes the proof because that is equal to the right-hand side that we have here. Next question here, we've got tan squared of theta is identical to 1 over cos squared theta minus 1. Now, my thought here is that the right-hand side expression is the more complicated one here, so I'm going to start with that. So I'm going to start with the right-hand side is this, and I'm going to gradually manipulate it until I get to the left-hand side. Now, as per my advice before, we've got algebraic fractions here. So if I turn this into 1 over 1, that allows me to combine it into a single fraction. So if we multiply the denominators, we just have cos squared theta, and we cross-multiply the numerators, we have 1 times 1, and then it's minus 1 times cos squared, which is cos squared theta here. And then again, as we saw before, using this second identity, if we have 1 minus cos squared theta, we have sine squared theta. Just like if we have 1 minus sine squared theta, we'd have cos squared theta. So this numerator is just sine squared theta over cos squared theta. And we know from the previous question that's just tan squared of theta, which is equal to the left-hand side, and we are done. And this final question here, and this will help us with some of the questions where we have to solve trigonometric equations, show that this equation here can be written in this form where we only have sine and not a mixture of sine and cos. So let's start with this. 5 sine x is equal to 1 plus 2 cos squared x. And this is not an identity. This is not true for all values of x. This is just an equation. So to manipulate this, well, we have an identity involving sine squared and cos squared. So this thing here is really easy to change into sine squared. This thing is less easy to change into cos because we don't have that squared on it. So we're going to change this. And as I was saying earlier, we can always replace cos squared with 1 minus sine squared or sine squared with 1 minus cos squared. So this is 1 minus sine squared of x. And then if we just expand that out, we have 1 plus 2 minus 2 sine squared x. And then the sine squared term here is positive, so let's get it all to the left-hand side. We have 2 sine squared x by adding 2 sine squared x to each side. We've still got this plus 5 sine x. And 1 plus 2 is 3. If we subtract it from both sides, we get minus 3 equals 0. And that completes the proof. What we'd then probably do is, because this resembles a quadratic equation, we could solve this and work out the values of x in a particular interval.